Hey, y'all. Um, so yeah, so I'm Jason. I'm with Impact Story. And there's a lot of people who have really bad seats for to speak. I'm going to stand over here and talk real loud. So um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a co-founder of Impact Story along with Heather Povovar, who's a postdoc, or recently finished postdoc at uh, University of British Columbia. And um, we're a little bit different in that we're, uh, um, from the previous two speakers, in that we're a nonprofit. So um, we're funded by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. And our goal is really to change the way that folks disseminate and um, produce research. And so we've got, you know, I've already heard a little bit from the previous two folks um, that we're really interested in alternative products as well as alternative methods. So there's all kinds of things as scholars that we can make, right? Like in the olden days, just a strictly you know, sort of paper-based ecosystem, all we ever really did was articles. We had sort of a homogenous ecosystem. But increasingly in the age of the web, we can have a heterogene heterogeneous heterogeneity. We have more heterogeneity in the ecosystem, right? One day I'll just quit on that word. We have a more diverse ecosystem. We can make all kinds of different things as scholars, right? Not only can we make traditional articles, but we can publish blog posts. We can make tweets. We can publish data sets. We can publish software. We have the conversations that we have increasingly go online in places like Math Overflow, right? Sort of a question and answer site for mathematicians. So as academic publishers, I think the real interesting thing about this era right now is the transition from what I kind of call capital P publishing, right, which is a very specific sort of set of rituals that we have been trained to do as scholars, to lowercase publishing, which is just making public, right? That's where the word publishing comes from, is making public. And increasingly, we're going to be able to make all sorts of things public in all sorts of different ways. And I think that's a very, very deep and um, uh, industry-changing challenge for publishers. And we've had a couple of sessions last year at SSP. We had a great session about this. We're going to have one put a plug for uh, our session. Uh, Tomorrow we're going to have one about the future, future period, which I think is going to be really cool. So I think there's going to be very profound changes. And part of those profound changes, we, as part of those profound changes, we're going to need profound changes in the research measurement ecosystem. So for me, all metrics isn't just a way, you know, this is interesting sort of in a marketing track or something. I don't, think it's, I, think, I don't think it's just a marketing issue. I think beyond that, I think it's a way to measure and understand this new ecosystem of research communication that the web is, like it or not, bringing to us. In the same way that the printing press really sort of uh, profoundly changed the letter-based communication ecosystem that science sort of was created with, right? It was all just sending letters back and forth. In that same way, the web is going to transform our printing press-based scholarly publishing system. Now, and of course, of course, you know, we don't, we, many journals don't even use a printing press anymore, but the article that you read on a computer screen, as I often say, is really the same product just delivered by faster horses, right? There's not really a fundamental change when I read an article. It might as well be on paper. It's just on a computer screen. You got that a little bit faster. So, that, that's kind of the context why I like to approach all metrics. It, it's a way to measure all sorts of different things. And more than, more than that, it's, it's a way to think about measurement as an <coughs> ecosystem. That's what gets me really excited. That's what we're really excited about in Impact Story is to be able to say all of the metrics, of all of the impacts, of all of the stuff that scholars make, what if we could put all of those in one big bucket and build things using that? How powerful could that be? In the same way that the web was able to be powerful based on the open standards, right, of the TCP IP stack and then HTTP on top of that and HTML on top of that, right? The web is able to be powerful because there's a big old bucket of all the web pages in the world, right? And it's very open and there's a very small set of open standards also to conform to that. And people can build really cool stuff and make lots of money on top of that. And I think the future of all metrics looks quite similar. I think uh, folks like Impact Store are going to be there, hopefully, um, creating sort of an open infrastructure, a non-profit open infrastructure, and other people are going to be able to build on that stuff, build really cool things, and make lots of money. So let me give you a couple of examples. And I would encourage you to go, uh, apparently the, the web browser here is not up to snuff, and I'm not going to risk it. But, um, but uh, check out uh, impactstore.org so you can kind of you know, play around there, and, and there's a couple sort of example collections and stuff like that. So you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. But I wanted to try and pick a couple of examples of what is, to me, um, you know, kind of, kind of the real promise of Altmetrics, we'll put them in different places, right? So here's an example of, um, you know, uh, Altmetrics embedded uh, on an article. So this is something that a lot of folks are doing. Um, here you can see, uh, you know, this is impact story. You say highly discussed, save side. So what's that mean? Well, we have the blue and we have the green. The blue, the idea is sort of capture scholarly impact, and the green sort of capture, capture public impact. Of course, this is a little bit faster, right? I mean, it's actually a lot more complicated than that, but it's sort of a first try. And so when we say highly discussed, um, if you were to mouse over that, so here's the side side, right? So the blue is side. So blue is scholar. So this is cited by scholars. It says you have one PubMed central citation. And as increasing numbers of sort of citation databases move into a more open paradigm, we'll actually be able to pull some of that other citation information as well. But also, and I didn't maybe use a good screenshot here, but if you were to uh, mouse over the highly discussed, you might see that there's four, five, seven, whatever tweets 
about this. And it's green because it's public, because most people on Twitter are public. Um, and where's that highly come from? Well, the highlights were normalizing based on uh, Web of Science data for that year. I don't know what year this thing was published. Say so it was 2008. So everything published. Talk to the audience so they can hear you. We can't hear you when you're talking. Uh, so everything, in, uh, everything published in, in Web of Science in 2008, right? We sort of put all that in the bucket and say, compared to everything else in Web of Science in 2008, you're highly tweeted. You got more tweets than most other folks generally. So, um, so that's sort of one example. I think that's kind of an easy one. Um, another one that I'm excited about is this Woods Hole connected dish. This is Woods Hole, like sort of, you know, a bunch of oceanography and stuff like that. And um, they have sort of a shared library um, where they sort of pool a bunch of their information resources together. And one thing they do in the library is this thing called Connected Village. And Connected Village is supposed to be sort of profiles for everybody in the sort of Woods Hole research community. And uh, so part of what they do is they say, well, let's put impact story metrics in there. So they're able to embed this. This is just, it's really easy. It's just like one line of JavaScript. Sort of drop the JavaScript in and then you're good to go. So you can see here it says, uh, again, highly sky cited by scholars, highly saved by scholars, things like that. And if you mouse over, you can kind of get the explanation. And if you click on it, it'll sort of take you to another page where it gets a little more in-depth view, show the percentiles, show you, um, uh, the, uh, show you the data behind it. So you can you know, go through a couple clicks, you can see who cited it, who tweeted it, things like that. So you can kind of tell the whole story. Um, but I think this is kind of fun because for them, you know, and, and here you can see also all metrics. So I think that's a really cool thing. Is, um, and, and Andrew is telling me, I think a lot of us are excited about these sort of embeddable widgets where you can put these metrics different places and people can sort of, um, it, it can go where they are, right? A lot of times, you know, people talk about this thing called profile fatigue, right? It's like, oh, I got profile on Facebook, I got profile on Twitter, I got profile. I don't want to keep all these attractive like, profiles. But I think it's, it's very exciting to be able to embed whatever you've got where you already are, where right? you don't have to ask them. So this would be an example of that, right? So we can embed, and, and the other thing I think is kind of interesting, I think we'll probably want to talk about this more in discussion, is how, uh, you know, these are different, right? So here we got um, uh, allmedia.com, man, they found a tweet, we didn't find any tweets at all. There's no, like, we didn't, we didn't even mention discuss here. So we didn't even find a tweet, and they found a tweet. And then, and then we got here, we got, uh, let's see, but we have found a Wikipedia, they didn't find a Wikipedia. How do we deal with that? A lot of people have kind of freaks them out, like, oh man, like the two metrics are different. Which really shocks me, because those of us in academia, I would think, who, are, who have looked at this at all, realize that every citation database gives entirely different numbers. I would be astounded if I were to get similar numbers from Scopus and Google Scholar and Web of Science. They're uniform, I mean, almost always different. Why are they different? Well, because they collect the data in different ways and they have sort of different strengths and weaknesses. I see, my, of course, Scopus is the best one because I got Michael Nunn there. But um, <laughs> you know, and, you know, depending on who you talk to and depending on the purpose that you want, right? I mean, one is better than another. I think we're going to be in a similar place with all metrics. But I think it'll be interesting to, to talk about later. Um, so this is a, another sort of um, another sort of application. This is a UK Parkinson's Disease Consortium. And part of their mandate, something that's really important to them, is that they need to be able to show public impact for what they're doing because this is very tied to their funding. In fact, you can even see they got a, a donate now button down here, right? Like they're they're integrated very deeply with the public, right? They're asking for money from people. If they're going to do that, <coughs> they also be showing public impact. So simply saying I wrote something and six years later it's got a bunch of citations. That doesn't do it. Right? If you go to Joe Taxpayer, Joe Taxpayer is not that impressed by six years you've got a bunch of citations. They want to see meaningful impact in their lives integrated with the community. So you can see, I, unfortunately, some of the better ones are down at the bottom, but you can actually see. You know, so this has been discussed by the public. You know, other things to say, well, it's saved by research, different things. You can set faster leading indicators. Things don't take so much time to accrue. A lot of times that's really important for like, I just went to, yesterday I had a really cool experience talking to the NIH, and they were really so it's like, sort of a, a committee, and they're, they're talking about how do we how do we do a better job of selling what the NIH does to, to, to Congress, right? Because this is a very big problem. We need to get this funding. And they were really interested in, in alt metrics, and I think I think should be, because like, this is a way to capture the kind of public conversation that's going on. So I think this is the kind of thing, to me, that is a real uh, powerful application of, of alt metrics. Now we're going back and down even another level below, and instead of being sort of a research group, this is just a single lab. And I love this. How cool would this be if, if you didn't get this like boring PDF that a lot of lab for CV, and instead you have you know, sort of a real, a, a real effort to convince the reader, hey, look, y'all, I'm having an impact. Then we got a little picture, show me what the thing was about. Then we got all these impact story badges to show all of the various impacts that you've made. I think the future of, of, of research presence on the web is moving towards this. It's moving towards making a profound and meaningful case about the impact your research is having, not just throwing a PDM and saying, hey, I built a bunch of stuff. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. Right? But instead, you'll say, at the, at the level of the item itself, what impact am I having? And we're going to hear Martin talk a little about article of metrics, excuse me, and how important that is. 
Um, and then here's here's uh, my last example. So I think it's kind of fun. Again, is uh, this guy built a um, he was a he was a researcher in plant science, uh, and he did a lot. Of, he used a lot of software for that. He said, "Oh man, it was a huge problem. There's all this different software that I could be using for plant science, and some of it's good, some of it's not, some of it's hard to get a hold of. So I'm going to make a directory." So he did. So he made a directory to index of all of the plant science software available. And he said, "Why don't I go a step further beyond that? And instead of just making an index, say, how good is the plant software? What 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 sort of um, evidence could we aggregate or accumulate about whether this particular piece of plant software, right, that I used to analyze leaves or this, I think analyzes cells by like simulating a balloon? Sounds pretty cool to me. Um, but yeah, so let's let's find a way to aggregate impact. So add an impact for a metric. So you're able to say for this particular software, what are people doing? Now here he's just he's just aggregating metrics of use of the paper that was written about the software." But what you can do in impact, which is kind of gets in this alternate products thing I was talking about, you can actually plug the software itself in the, in the impact store. You can see, for instance, if you save the software on GitHub, you can see um, the number of people who have bookmarked that software, the number of people who have um, forked the software and sort of made their own versions of it, almost like kind of a little citation of the software, right? Basing your software on somebody else's. So you can get all these different metrics of these alternative products. I think this is really fun. And then finally, I just want to share a real quick screenshot because um, we're rolling this out in like a couple like a couple days of our new sort of um, interface. We're going to try and move towards this uh, being a place where people can more easily sort of share an online CV. They can either have this on our site, right? So this would be mine, kind of some keywords and some tabs and stuff like that. And you can see um, I got on this one. I just got articles and slide decks, but I could also add you know my software. I could also add my data sets. I could also add my website. All these different kind of products that I've made, my YouTube videos, stuff like that. I can have all these on my CV, kind of in one place. And then, as I said, what's I think important to this is if you want to have your own profile like this on impactstore.org, go, hey, that's great, go for it, right? We'll, we'll, we'll allow that. But if, on the other hand, you want to embed it into your own website, then you can do that too. And I think that's really important and powerful, along with, and I want to put again a very good plug in, keeping that data open. I think that's very important because if that data is open, other people can build on top of it. All these metrics can sort of flow like water from one application to another. We can have a recommendation engine built on metrics. Sorry, somebody did a really cool iPad app. And Every, every day the iPad app gives you things based on your Twitter network that are most likely to, uh, that you're most likely to find interesting and read. Right? So you can kind of say, well, what should I read today? Well, what has my Twitter network been talking about? Right? This is peer review at its, at its most meaningful in many ways because these are my self-selected peers, people that I follow on Twitter. Right? If we allow those metrics to be open, we can imagine lots of other profusion of different kinds of recommendation apps like this. Right? Then use not just Twitter, but a whole bunch of other things. I think I'm out of time. Okay, thank you. <laughs>